All right, so we're back to working on the boat. Uh, let me say there, buddy. So anyway, back to working on the boat. Now, uh, now that the gunnels are all but finished, uh, now we're gonna start working on the floor of the boat. So what the floor is gonna consist of is basically uh, two by two squares laid out on a grid all the way throughout the boat. And then I've got four by eight sheets of eighth inch material here, which is gonna create the floor. The whole thing's gonna get a rubberized coating, so I'm not worried about a, you know working with diamond plate or, or vinyl or anything. It's all gonna be coated. So what I've got here is a pile of two by two by 16th square tubing. That's what my floor is gonna be made out of. And we're gonna run this stuff on about 10 inch centers all the way down through here. So it's gonna be a big addition to uh, rigidity in this boat. It should be very stable. It should never have to deal with a flexible floor. Um, as well as by using 16th, it's not gonna add a ton, ton of weight to this boat. So anyway, gonna get that started. I'm starting to, uh, got my miter saw set up there. I'm gonna start cutting all this uh, material in, working it all the way down. I'm gonna do it in two sections. You can see right there, that's the, uh, that's gonna be the basically the start or the end, however you wanna say, of the front deck. So we're gonna work that part of the floor first and then come up and transition in. So one of the unique things about this boat that I'm going to do is this secondary floor, I guess if you wanna call it, or the actual floor of the boat is going to be completely welded all the way around. It's going to be completely waterproof from the actual bottom of the boat. Now, the reason that I wanna do that is because I've owned, what, probably seven or eight different commercially available boats in the past, and all of them have the exact same problem. If they have a floor in it, there's a way for water to get underneath that floor to the actual bottom of the boat. Now, that's fine and dandy, except for the fact that these boats really don't have a way to pump air and to dry out that very bottom of the boat. And normally what is down there is your bilge pumps, your live well pumps, your fuel tanks, you know, a, a lot of electronics really and stuff that you really don't want to get moldy. And what happens is by not being able to get air down through there, uh, you always end up with a, a bunch of green mold that grows on all that stuff. So by me taking and completely welding in this floor, all my fuel tanks, everything else is going to be basically above that floor. I should almost have essentially an airlock so where I should uh, keep that, that mold to bay. The only thing that I'm worried about is in the colder months uh, and especially in the spring whenever the water is still colder, I know I will get some condensation in the bottom of the boat uh, you know, just because of the temperature variations and I want to be able to remedy that and pump air through there. So uh, I was just thinking the other day that I've ran up and down this boat, uh, this 25 foot boat, I've ran up and down it, welded it full length, and grinded it full length both times, six different times. So, a uh, lot more to come. I've still got to weld the whole inside of this, and then plus the full length for the, uh, for the storage space. So, still lots and lots, actually hundreds and hundreds of feet of welding left to do. And as of right now, I'm sitting at 39 pounds of weld wire that's in this boat and trailer at the moment. And if I had to guess, there's gonna be at least another 25 to 30 pounds go in this boat. All right, so I just completed cutting everything uh, that I need to basically make the floor. You can see there it all is in the boxes there. Sunlight's bad. Uh, anyway, there's 205 separate pieces there that needs to be welded. Um, and it's gonna be all welded into this floor. And so what I'm doing is, you can see on each one of these, uh, 
these bottom strakes, there's going to be a vertical two by two square welded to that on each one, uh, that one there, and then that one there, and then one down the center. And then these, uh, these outside ones, they're so close, I'm gonna use just bar stock that I've got left over 3 16 But anyway, you can see I've went through, I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera, but I've went through it and I've, I've measured everything and I've marked it all, so that way I knew what to cut. Uh, so whenever I get my foam in here, I can just slap this stuff in here and start welding. Uh, it'll be super easy. All I've got to do now is uh, I've got my studs laid out on that one. I need to lay out, they're not studs, but my cross pieces, I need to lay that out on that and then I'll just snap some lines uh, across through there and that'll give me uh, a good layout for that. So anyway, uh, a lot of cutting, a lot of welding left to do. Like I said, there's, there's all of it there. It's uh, all labeled. There's 205 pieces, and you figure if I'm gonna weld down two sides of it, that's four inches. Um, you do the math, that's 69 feet of weld that I gotta make into the bottom of this boat, 820 inches worth. So uh, a lot of welding, but what's gonna happen is this floor is gonna be super, super stable. It's not gonna move around. I'm never gonna have any issues with it uh, flexing or popping or anything you know and this is only going to strengthen this boat even that much more not to mention uh whenever i tie in the uh the 14 inch sides coming down that's going to make this boat just like a it's going to make it like a rock and i've talked about that before where um you know in a riveted boat you can have some flex those rivets will take the flex that's why they rivet airplanes together uh, but in a welded boat, flex is your enemy. Uh, if you have any kind of flex with a welded boat, that's where you start getting issues with cracking. So I want to make this boat as rigid and solid as I possibly can. This is a 25 foot boat. Uh, whenever you go smacking into a three foot wave at 30 mile an hour, there's a lot of force that's going to be taken all the way down through this boat. So we want to make sure we get it all welded in nice and solid. So anyway, I'm going to quit rambling there. Uh, go get my, uh, my foam board insulation and we're going to get that cut and set in here and then, uh, do a little bit more layout and we'll go start welding. With everything cut, now I can start installing. Um, very simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to crawl in here. I'm going to make sure everything's all butted up tight and I'm going to start taking the, uh, the uprights for the floor and I'm going to get those welded in to the actual, uh, to the floor of the boat. I'm not going to weld them into these cross pieces just yet. Once I get the uprights welded in, then I'm going to come through with my uh, rigid foam board insulation and uh, and set that in first. Cap everything over, and then we'll weld everything up. So I've got everything set in there. Uh, everything's numbered. It just kind of simple. Uh, just lay it out like a puzzle and start welding. So anyway, I'm going to get to welding. It's uh, after work here. It's right now 8.34 in the evening, and uh, we've got a, a real feel of 85 degrees, a dew point of 74 degrees, and a humidity of 86%. So, it is warm. So, got the leathers on. I'm going to get warm and do some weather. Man, this summer will not end. I forgot. The heat index was 107 all day today. I'm just over the heat. Sorry for the gripe.
All right, so let me get you caught up here. Um, I didn't really time lapse a whole lot of doing the floor. I figured you guys had had enough of staring at my ass while I weld. So anyway, um, got the sub floor completely done. All welded in anyway. I've got just a little bit more insulation to put in. Uh, I've got uh, basically the the bulk of the insulation put in. This is a this is two inch foam board, rigid foam board, uh, you know, construction material. And so this this does several things for me. First being, it's going to act as a sound deadener. Uh, you know, this is, a, this is an aluminum boat. You'd be beating through three foot waves. If there you don't have some type of insulation underneath there, you're going to hear every wave you hit. So gonna have, be a salad deadener number two is it's gonna give me a little bit of insulative properties to keep the condensation down uh, you know in the, in the early early spring and late fall months uh, and the big one is this will give me actually quite a bit of flotation if for ever I need it um, so you know multiple uses so what I've got here in the two center runs there's six inches worth of a foam board then the one on either side of that uh, is four inches, and the outside has has two inches. So there's actually um, all said and done, there's going to be six full sheets of of this two inch foam board uh, flotation in this boat, which is actually quite a bit. So anyway, you can see here a lot of work on this uh, this sub floor. Like I said, this is all ten inch on center, two by two square tubing. Uh, this was a lot of work. This is a lot of welding, a lot of pieces, a lot of work. And, you know, some of you guys are going to say, oh, why couldn't you go 16s or 12s or whatever? Well, you know, this boat's going to, this is a lifetime boat. This boat's going to be beaten through big waves for the rest of its life. It's a long boat. Why not? Why not spend a little extra time and make the sucker real beefy? So I've got uprights there, 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 and then it's welded into the side of the boat there and there. Uh... Like I said, 10 inches on center. Everything's welded 100% except for the top and bottom. Uh, you know, so it's welded on, on two sides. You could set a semi on this and I don't think it flex too much. So, pretty happy with that. So now you can kind of see how the boat is actually gonna start getting laid out. So this area here is going to be kind of the cockpit of the boat or the, the floor. Uh, it's about 15 foot worth of floor area here and then right on the other side of this is where it's going to step up to the front deck. So what I'm sitting here doing right now is deciding how far down I want to bring my front deck. Because whatever, however far I bring down my front deck, I'm going to continue that same plane all the way through the back of the boat and I'm, I'm going to come out about 14 inches on each side and put kind of a catwalk shelf and that's going to be my storage in the boat. But my big thing is I want to be able to lay 16 foot rods all the way down without having to put them in a in a uh, elevated holder of sorts. I want to lay them on that catwalk. Uh, so I'm trying to decide here. I'm doing some measurements and I think I'm going to drop down 6 inches from the top of the boat. That's going to be the top of my deck, the level of my deck, and it's going to carry out. I think that'll, that'll give me a nice, uh, nice profile. My, my big D-bottom boat is about a foot down and you know it seems a little much uh, especially if you're casting I'm gonna be spider rigging off this boat so I kinda wanna be sitting on top of the water a little bit I don't wanna turn this thing into a bass boat I'm not a bass fisherman uh, I don't need to be all up on top fishing in big waves so I think six inches down is a, is a good happy medium uh, and it'll still give me a nice little area where if you're stepping into the boat, you can take that six inch step, step down into the bottom of the boat, uh, off the dock. I think everything will work out real nice. So, by, by doing a six inch step, that means that you're going to have an 18 inch step going from the floor to the front deck, which is too much. So, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to come in and I'm basically going to lose that first run that's 8 inches or 10 inches worth of, uh, of deck space and what I'm going to do is the whole length across from my catwalks out I'm going to build in a step that is going to house my three batteries for my trolling motor and so that'll put 
you know, quite a little bit of weight, you know, 250 pounds or so of weight forward, which is good because that motor right there weighs 700 pounds and I need some sort of a ballast in the front of this boat or else I'll have a, a lot of porpoising issues um, just because I, I don't have any weight in the front of the boat. So I make me a 10 inch tall step, split the difference and you'll just be able to, it'll be all the way across. You'll have a, a 10 inch tread basically, which is a nice, nice uh, landing and you can step up onto the front deck. So that's the plan now. Uh, just kind of get you guys caught up. Spent quite a little bit of time on this, uh, this subfloor. It's, there's a lot of work here and you'll never see it once the floor is on. But, uh, you know, it's, it's good to have a good solid subfloor, just like building a house. So, uh, anyway, fuel tank and everything, like I said before, everything's gonna, for, as far as I'm concerned right now, is gonna be housed above this deck. That's my big deal. I wanna have this completely sealed off. Basically make two separate levels. So whenever I weld in the floor, I'm actually gonna weld it 100% all the way around the boat try to keep this bottom as dry as possible without any uh, not having any moisture issues so now what I'm gonna do is now I think I've decided on six inches uh, down I'm gonna start getting some tubing in start laying some uh, some framework in here get my uprights here and just kind of get a skeleton uh, rough skeleton tacked in and welded up of of the front deck this is gonna give me somewhere around the six foot front deck which is Plenty for me. Uh, like I said, uh, I want the front three foot basically for spider rigging. And like I said, I'm not a bass fisherman. I don't need a whole deck boat. I'm not building that. Uh, you know, if I'm drifting out for cats in big ways, I'm going to be sitting down low here. So, you know, unless I, uh, you know, unless I do a lot of shore casting, I won't be on the front deck that much. And even so, six foot. Being that wide is, that's a dance floor up there, so that's fine. So uh, anyway, get the skeleton up, um, and then I'll have to start kind of figuring out where I want my live wells and, and other things. I, I still haven't decided if I'm gonna put a storage box up there. I know there's gonna be two different live wells in that front deck, one facing back this way, and then one very far forward for, uh, for my spider rig and applications where I should never have to leave that front deck once I spider rig. So anyway, gonna kind of get a frame set up and uh, like I said, this is, I'm kind of flying by my ass on all this. So uh, this is all getting dreamt up as I go. There's no plan. So I'll, uh, I'll check back with you guys whenever I've got something more to show you and, uh, and we'll go from there.